Thank you very much for coming. It was very nice hearing the shlokas from uh, Bhagavad Gita recited uh, by our um, Vidyarthi. This is Bhagavad Gita as it is, fifth chapter, text 12. Yukta karma palam tyaktva Shantimapnoti naishtakim Ayukta kama karena Pale sakto nibadhyate Yukta karma palam tyaktva Shantimapnoti naishtakim Ayukta kama karena Pale sakto nibhadhyate Yukta karma palam tyaktva Shantim apno dinaishtikim Ayukta kama karena Pale sakto nibhadhyate The steadily devoted soul attains unadulterated peace because he offers the result of all activities to me. Whereas a person who is not in union with the divine, who is greedy for the fruits of his labor, becomes entangled. Purport. The difference between a person in Krishna consciousness and a person in bodily consciousness is that the former is attached to Krishna, whereas the latter is attached to the results of his activities. The person who is attached to Krishna and works for him only is certainly a liberated person, and he has no anxiety over the result of his work. In the Bhagavatam, the cause of anxiety over the result of an activity is explained as being one's functioning in the conception of duality, that is, without knowledge of the absolute truth. Krishna is the supreme absolute truth, the personality of Godhead. In Krishna consciousness, there is no duality. All that exists is a product of Krishna's energy, and Krishna is all good. Therefore, activities in Krishna consciousness are on the absolute plane. They are transcendental and have no material effect. One is therefore filled with peace in Krishna consciousness. But one who is entangled in profit calculation for sense gratification cannot have that peace. That is the secret of Krishna consciousness. Realization that there is no existence besides Krishna is the platform of peace and fearlessness. That's probably good. Uh. mobile banna hai <laughs> Om Gyana Timirandhasya Gyananjana Salakaya Chakshurn Militam Jena Tasmai Shri Gurave Namaha Shri Chaitanya Manobhistam Sthapitam Jena Bhutale Shvayam Rupakada Mahyam Tadhati Shapadantikam Bande hung Shri Guru, Shri Jata Padakamalang, Shri Gurun Vaishnavamscha, Shri Rupam Shagrajatam, Shahagana Raganatan Vitam Stam Sajivam, Sadvaitam Savadhutam, Parijana Sahitam, Krishna Chaitanya Devam, Shri Radha Krishna Padan, Shahagana Lalita 
श्री विशाखान विधा हे कृष्णा करुणा सिंधो दीन बंधो जगतपते गोपेश गोपिका कंता राधा कांतन मोस्तुते तप्ता काम शन गौरंगी राधे वृंदवनेश्वरी वृषभनु सुधे देवी प्रणमा हरि प्रिय वंशा कौपतरुभ्य कृपा सिंधोभ्य पतिता पावनेभ्यो वैष्णवेभ्यो नमो नम श्रीकृष्णचैतन्य प्रभुनंद श्रीअद्वैत गदाधर श्रीवासरीगौरभक्तवृंद हरे कृष्ण हरे कृष्ण 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 हरे 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 राम हरे राम 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 हरे हरे um you brought that child to hear the lecture Is that little boy he wants to sit and listen for quite some time those who are the door managers can manage okay i would do a lot of work in africa any child who makes noise can come with me yukta karma palam tyaktva shantim apnoti naishtakim ayukta kama karena pale sakto nipadyate Yukta means uh, connected with Krishna. The just in one word, the impersonalist philosophy is uh, negated. Uh, yukta means connected. So connection means there must be two. Krishna and you. Okay, second announcement. If you haven't yet turned off your cell phone, please do so. If you're not sure if you've turned it off, please do so. They need more uh, finance in Africa, so if your cell phone rings, we'll be happy to take it. Yukta karma. So yukta means connected uh, with Krishna. Uh, if there's no difference between Krishna and the living entity, if in all respects they're one, then there's no connection. Connection means there must be, just like marriage ceremony, uh, the husband and wife are uh, connected uh, in marriage. That means there must be two. Uh, of course, husband and wife become one, but they remain two. They're one, and yet they're two. Uh, similarly, Krishna is one with all living beings, and yet he's distinct. Nityo nityanam chaitanas chaitanana. There's among all the eternal living beings, there's one supreme eternal living being. Uh, that's Krishna. Eko bahunam yo kama. He's maintaining all the others. So yukta means uh, connected. Uh, not that I become God, but I become, or that I am God. Uh, but connected, yukta. Uh, so Yukta means the Krishna conscious person. That's how Prabhupada uh, glosses it. Krishna conscious person, the person who's connected with Krishna. 
So now he's being described. Uh, yukta karma palam chaktva. He gives up the results of work. Hmm? So uh, one may say that he must be a fool. He's giving up, he's working, and then throwing away the result. Uh, but uh, karma palam chaktva. He knows that the result of the work is not my property. It's not my property. Uh, it's Krishna's property. Mm -hmm. And if I, what is that? Um, sarva loka maheshram. Bhaktaram yagyata pasam sarva loka maheshram. He's the supreme enjoyer. He's the supreme owner of everything. He's the proprietor of all the planets. So if I claim uh, that I, I worked and now it's mine, then I'm a thief. Someone's working in the bank, they took in so much money, now at the end of the day they want to walk off with the money. Uh, it's the result of my work. No, that's not your property. Karman ye vadikara ste maapale shukadacha. You have a right to work, but you don't have the right to claim proprietorship, ownership, over the result of the work. Uh, so this is, uh, in the modern world, revolutionary, or in the material world, revolutionary, because everyone thinks that the result of the work, that I'm working, uh, I'm the worker, I'm entitled to the result. Hmm? Otherwise, why am I working? But first of all, he's uh, deluded as to how the result is coming about. In the Bhagavad Gita, Krishna explains that there are different causes for the result of a work. For, for, for some result to come about, five causes have to converge. Uh, Adishtanam, the, the body has to be there. Uh, then the worker, karta. And the different senses, karanam cha pratagvita. And vividas cha pratag cheshta, uh, different kinds of endeavor. And daivam cha vatra panchama, uh, the hand of destiny or the Supreme Lord is the ultimate factor. Uh, that means uh, even the body that comes from Krishna, it's on loan. The, all right, I'm the worker, I'm also part of Krishna. My senses have come from Krishna. They belong to Krishna. The endeavor is only possible because of Krishna, otherwise I can't move a finger. And daivam, destiny, is Krishna himself. So I say, I did it. I made it happen. I was the person who brought this cash in. No. You couldn't have done anything without Krishna. And uh, because we're parts of Krishna, Krishna's the enjoyer, not me. Krishna's the enjoyer. Just in the hand, in the body, the hand is not the enjoyer. The stomach is the enjoyer. The hand has to put the food in the stomach, then the hand will enjoy. Otherwise, on its own, if the hand thinks it's all for me, the hand is crazy. Uh, so, karma palam tyaktva means yat karoshi yadashnashi tat kuru shamararpanam. Everything should be done for Krishna, everything should be offered to Krishna. If we think, now just work and, and throw away the result, then I'm a fool. And if I think I'll take the result for myself, then I'm a thief. Just like you find some wallet in the temple room. If you think, um, just let it sit there, or in the street, and just let it sit there, then you're foolish. The uh, thing is not meant just to sit there and be stolen. And if you steal it, then you're the thief. But the right thing is, let us find the owner of this 
swallow it, return it, then you're good. Well, Krishna is the owner of everything, therefore everything should be done for Krishna. Uh, I was at a function in Florida one time in America. There was a Hindu students, no, not Indian students uh, center being inaugurated near the university. So they had a uh, Hindu student speak, they had a Muslim student speak, they had a Christian student speak, graduate students. And the Hindu student was the most completely confused. <laughs> he was trying to explain karma nye vadikara ste ma paleshu kudashan, that you have a right, but you shouldn't be attached to the results of your work. And he was falling all over his shoelaces trying to explain it. Here's this graduate student. He's working like anything to get his degree. And he's trying to explain that you work, but you don't care about the result of your work. It was totally incomprehensible. Uh, because he left out Krishna. As soon as we leave out Krishna, actually nothing makes any sense. Krishna is the absolute truth. If you leave out the absolute truth, everything becomes relative and everything becomes false. Hmm. Everything becomes relative. Whatever you think, whatever uh, anyone thinks, that's everyone has his own point of view. Nothing is better, nothing is worse. They're all relative. Everyone becomes like the lawmaker. It's like in Bombay, I say, well, there's no government. I make the law for myself, you make the law for yourself, the next man makes, that's craziness. Then I make the law that I pick your pocket. <laughs> so, ma pale shukadachana, or karma palam tyaktva, means tatkuru shamadarpanam. Everything should be done for the sake of Krishna. Uh, then, ashubha shubha palayar eva moksha se karma bandhanai. One becomes freed from all the reactions of auspicious and inauspicious work. Shubha shubha palayar eva moksha se. So one thinks, I know I want to be freed from the results of bad karma. Uh, by bad karma, ashubha, one becomes ugly, one takes birth in a poor family, uneducated, ugly, diseased. No one wants that. But everyone wants shubhapa. I should look, I should be beautiful, I should be educated, I should be wealthy, I should belong to an aristocratic family, I should have good health. Everyone wants that. But what is that shubha? Shubha is just less a shubha. Uh, it's not fortunate. It's less unfortunate. Why is that? Uh, I want to have a beautiful body. That means I have to have another body. That means mrityu samsara vartmini. I have to go through birth and death again. Uh, I want to have a good education. Then I become... Again, uh, proud and stuck in this material world. Another birth. Uh, aristocratic family. I'm this body. This is my family. Janasya uh, mohoya moham mamiti. I become uh, proud. I become uh, falsely happy. Yes, I, I look good. I feel good. I have a good education, prestige, this, this. So let me stay in this material world and be happy. That means bewildered. And that means bewildered, because as soon as I accept this body, asannapi kleshada asude, then there'll be trouble. It's not that the rich man, <laughs> just like birth, you take birth in a poor family or a rich family, you'll have to go through the same trouble. Not that they, for the rich man, the rich baby, they put extra pillows in the womb. He goes through the same suffering that the poor man 
poor child goes through. At the time of death, uh, it's not that the rich man, oh, he has all good doctors and this, that. Uh, he has to die as much as the poor man has to die. Hmm? And in between also. It's not that uh, the, the rich people are all happy, the poor people are all miserable. No, we know so many rich people who are miserable. Uh, full of anxieties. Full of all sorts of troubles. So shubha shubha palam. Uh, Krishna says, by acting on my account, you'll be, be freed from all the results of bad karma and good karma. That means all karma. Otherwise, good or bad, in the Chaitanya Charitamrita it said, uh, Dvaite bhadra bhadra jnane mano dharma, e balo e mande sabrama. In this material world of duality, uh, this uh, shubha ashubha, good and bad, auspicious and inauspicious, it's all a mental concoction. Because even if I take birth as Indra, I'll have to die again. Uh, whatever position. Abrahma bhuvana loka puna bhuvana. So it's all mental concoction. Uh, I'd rather die rich. <laughs> What's the difference? Prabhupada gave the example dry stool or wet stool, after all. E balo e manda. A sub Brahma. This is good, this is bad, this is all nonsense. Any position, you know, the, again, uh, no, your position is terrible. You're in this prison bar, prison cell uh, with uh, iron bars. Uh, my cell has gold bars. And prison is prison. You may have gold bars, iron bars. Or no, I don't want to be iron or gold. Silver is all right. No. Jail is jail. Even uh, Brahma Loka is jail. Hmm. So, karma palam chaktva. How does one get free from karma? By giving up the karma pa. If I remain attached to the fruits of the work, Pale sakto nibhajyate. That's, uh, yes. Pale sakto, I become attached to the thing. And because I'm attached, I have to come back. Prabhupada gave the, some story that some man was too attached to his family and home. Uh, he came back as a uh, beggar and the, uh, was approaching that home and his for family members, former family members, we're driving him away with shoes. Or you're attached to your home, you come back as a rat in the home. Because I'm attached. I'm attached to India, again take birth in India. I'm attached to America, again take birth in America. That means taking birth again. Ritu Sangsara Bhart. So karma pal, I'm attached to, I'm working out of attachment and what am I attached to? The source of my very misery. I'm thinking this karma pal is the source of my happiness. I've, got, I've worked, I've gotten some nice results, now I can enjoy. But that attachment is the cause of my suffering. What is my enjoyment to reduce my misery? I'm hungry. So now I go to a restaurant and eat. Now I'm not hungry anymore. That means my misery is now alleviated. I've got such a good doctor. That means my uh, health problems can be reduced somewhat. Uh, I have a, a so much uh, agitation uh, out of sex desire. So now I'll have a nice uh, wife or a nice girlfriend. That means to reduce my 
trouble. The whole world is troublesome. And when I reduce my trouble, that's enjoyment. Prabhupada gave the example, or Chaitanya Charitamrita, I think, again, the example is given, that some man is being punished for criminal activities, so he's being pushed under the water. They grab him by the hair, push him under the water, then they pull him up for a moment, and push him under the water, and pull him up, <gasps> push him under. So what's happiness in this material world? <gasps> And for this we want to come back. So, kamakarena, uh, on account of my kam. Kam means material desire, sex desire, or any desire for enjoyment. Kamakarena, for the sake of my uh, desire, I'm working, I'm after the result of the work, I get the result, I become entangled, and I go through the whole thing again and again. Uh, and what is that? In the, uh, Prahlad Maharaj says that Bahudu uh, Kapaja, the Tripyantine hakripana bahudu kabhaja. They were yan maitunadi grihamedi sukham hituchcham. Kandu yane na kariyor ivatukatuk. There's so many ways I'm trying to be happy, trying to be happy, trying to be happy. Uh, especially by sex life, which is the, the thing in the material world. And then in connection with sex life, then there's uh, home and family and money and relatives and uh, Bombay. The, these cities like Bombay, New York, London, they're like monuments to sex life. Because of sex desire, everyone is trying to enjoy, trying to enjoy, and then they get together in big cities and with so many clubs and institutions and uh, concert halls and uh, athletic stadiums and to enjoy. But Tripyanti Neha, no one is satisfied. Uh, and rather, uh, the bahum, the dukkha dukkha, the miseries upon miseries upon miseries. This is the material world and some, some rumor of happiness. Or some, even suppose uh, someone says, no, I'm getting happiness. What? Two minutes you get. Hmm? Two minutes happiness. Or five minutes. And then smashed. Huh. We live for some short time. We get some little happiness and then, pow, all right, out. To Kali Amashashra. So, Kamakarena Pale Sakto. We see people are so attached. Uh, being so attached, they can't get out. Uh, there was, there are many, just like during the, uh, if there's a war, sometimes people are warned that Everything, you'll be arrested, these communists, you'll be arrested, this, that. But people stay. My business is here, my money is here, my home is here, my business is there. But then your death is there also. And people would rather die than lose their investment. Or rather they think, no, I won't die. So let me stay here with my money, with my family, with my that. Even though death is staring them in the face. But they can't think, no, let me just go. No, instead they'll lie to themselves. No, they probably won't. It'll be all right. And then everything's taken anyway. 
So yukta karma pala palam tyaktva shantim apnoti naishtikim. Uh, why are we working? For happiness. Hmm? But to be happy, you have to have peace. And that's the problem, that even the richest man is full of anxiety. What is that? Up to the time of death? Uh, in Bhagavad Gita, it said that till the time of death, their anxiety is beyond limits. Where is someone who knows that verse? Uh, anyway, the meaning is there. Uh, up to the time of death, anxiety and anxiety and anxiety. Uh -huh. No peace. The mind is can't sleep at night, thinking about the business, thinking about the daughter's marriage, thinking about the son, worrying about this, worrying about that. Can't sleep. My health problems, my marital problems, my financial worries, the market, my job. My this, my that. Chintam aparameyam sha pralyantam upashita. Kamo papoga paramai tabaditi nishtita. With this material calculation, when we forget Krishna, then we think, uh, what is the goal of my life? Kamo papoga parama. The highest goal of my life is to enjoy. Um, you ask people, you know, go around with a microphone and ask people, what's the highest goal in your life? And you'll get uh, to enjoy. I want to do this, I want to do it. Under different names and labels, and it'll be, I want to enjoy. Um, either alone or with others, with my family, with my country. Kamo Papoga Padama, to enjoy sense gratification is our main business. Hmm? One American president was famous for saying that the business of America is business. Uh, because they have no higher, higher purpose. Uh, our, our business is democracy. Our, our goal is to have democracy, to have freedom, to have the, for what? For sense gratification. Finally, the goal is sense gratification. Even in religious life, dharma, artha, kama, moksha. But so the, the religion is for economic development. The economic development is for sense gratification. Moksha we don't even think about. Kamo papoga parama. And what is the result? Chintam aparameyam cha. With this mentality, our anxiety is beyond measure. Aparameya means more than you can calculate. Chintam, chinta. <laughs> I saw some, there was some newspaper article many years ago. Um, I forget how I saw it. Anyway, the Sonia Gandhi had finally come out of her uh, Adarsh Hindustani Nari mode and was decided to, to run for office. Hmm. And you know, because till then the, the whole party was like, what are we gonna do? What are we gonna do? Then Sonia announced, Yes, I all right, I'll I'll run. And some politician said, Ah, Merachinta Hogaya. <laughs> but for how long? Mera ek chinta hogaya. But I have unlimited chinta. That's only one anxiety. There, aneka chitta vibranta, moha jala samagata. So many anxieties, more than we can count. More than we can count. And Krishna says, ashantasya kutasu come. If I'm not peaceful, where's the question of happiness? There's a story from true or false Greek history that there was one man 
He was a little envious of the king, that the king has so much money, the king has such good food, the king has such everything. So the king arranged that you sit here uh, and we'll have a big banquet for you and nice cushion and everything. Only there'll be a sword hanging over your head by one thread. And at any time it could fall. Damocles. So, nice food, nice cushion, nice everything, but at any moment you could die. Then, where's the happiness? I'm in total anxiety, how can I be happy? And everyone is in that situation, at any moment the sword could drop. And we know it. Then where's the actual happiness? At any minute, my business could collapse. At any minute, my health could collapse. At any minute, any one of my family members could be run over by a truck. I could be run over by a truck. At any minute, this. At any minute, that. And we have no control. We're helpless. Not that I'm a rich man. My, my son won't be run over. Anyone. And therefore, chintam, so many anxieties, apadameyam, more than we can count. Pralayantam, up to the very last moment. And therefore, ashantasya, without peace, kutasukam, where's the question of happiness? Well, I'm attached to so many things, starting with this body then in relationship to this body, family, home, money. But anything and everything can be taken away at any moment. Therefore, on what platform is my happiness resting? I've worked so hard for so many things, but everything can be taken away, will be taken away, starting with this body. Starting or finishing, one way or the other. It will all be taken. Therefore, <laughs> karma palam tyaktva. So by, by crazy, I'm going to give up the results of my work. You're going to give it up whether you like it or not. Fool. No, I'm, I'm not going to give up the results. You must give up the results. <laughs> Even money. If you don't give it up, you can't, you can't enjoy anything. That's the paradox of money. In order to enjoy, you have to get rid of the money. And then you don't have it anymore. But then you have something, but that something will be lost also. The misers are holding on. I have so much money, so much money. And the money doesn't, what will you do, eat it? They have so much money, they can't even figure out how to spend it all. But they're holding on to it, holding on to it. And what happiness. And finally, they have to give up everything. Everything they worked for, everything they saved for, everything that they put so much energy into, everything that they loved, everything that they, it all is left behind. That means everyone has to give up the results of his activities. Everyone has to give up the results of his work. There's only one question, voluntarily or kicking and screaming. Those are our real choices. Not that I'll hold on to it. No one in history has ever been held, able to hold on to the results of their work. It's all been taken away. But the Krishna conscious person knows from the beginning uh, that it's not mine. And therefore, I should offer it to Krishna. Srila uh, Bhaktivinoda uh, Thakur, Manasa Deha Geha Yoki Chumor, Arpilu Tuapade Nandakishore. My dear Nandakishore, Krishna, uh, I offer everything at your lotus feet. What is that? Uh, manasa, my mind. Why should I offer my mind to illusion? Let me offer my mind to the absolute truth, to you. Deha, this body. Let me dedicate this body to your service. Geha, 
Uh, what use is my home? If it's not a Krishna conscious place, it's like a snake hole. It's like a place where animals live. Uh, it's not a civilized place. I'm just trying to enjoy sense gratification. Yeah, that's what the animals do. They have their nests and their caves and their burrows. And they live together and try to gratify their senses. And they have no higher purpose. Kamo Papoga Parama. But the Krishna conscious person knows that my purpose is to serve Krishna. My purpose is to serve Krishna. Therefore, my home, Geha, my body, my mind, my home, uh, offered to Krishna. Offered to Krishna. That doesn't mean I'll suffer. It means I'm seeing things as they are. Uh, just as we're offering food to Krishna. So Krishna doesn't say, thank you very much, now you starve. Uh, you take nice Krishna prasadam and be happy. Nitya yukta vyukta nam yoga kshema vaham yam. We were hearing before. Uh, Krishna will provide for us. Krishna will see to our every need. Uh, but our first need is to be the servant of Krishna. If I'm the servant of the king, the king will see that I'm fed, the king will see that I have a place to stay, the king will see to everything. If I'm my own man, then I have to see to it. So Krishna is there. We're all servants of Krishna. When we're situated in that relationship of service, then shantim apnoti naistikim. Then real peace. Everyone is looking, peace, peace, and there's no peace. But when one is connected to Krishna, uh, when one gives up the results of one's work for the pleasure of Krishna, shantim, shantim apnoti neshtakim. Then he's peaceful, then he's happy, and then he's situated in his real position, so he'll be peaceful and happy in this life, and next life go back to Godhead. A simple thing. Simple thing. So, uh, simple and practical also. We don't have to be like that Hindu student trying to explain how well, one doesn't care about the results of his work. We do care. But we care because we want to offer it to Krishna. Someone is cooking for Krishna, they're not thinking, oh, what the heck. They're thinking, make, let me make it very nice so Krishna will be get a nice offering. Uh, and then the incidental result is they get to take the uh, results as prasadam. Simple adjustment. Uh, what is that Krishna says? Yagya shishtasina santa muchante sarva kilbishai. The person who performs, uh, who eats food offered in sacrifice, uh, gets freed from all past sins. We're all suffering on the, as a result of past sinful activities. But just by eating food offered to Krishna, one is freed from so many past sinful reactions. And bunjate te tagham papa ye pachanti karana. And uh, the same person, if he's only cooking for himself and eating for his own enjoyment, pale uh, sakto nibhajate, he becomes entangled. Punjate te to come papa. He's eating, but actually he's eating uh, sinful reactions because he thought, this is for my enjoyment, this is for my enjoyment. Nothing's for our enjoyment, everything's for Krishna's satisfaction. And when Krishna is satisfied, we'll automatically be satisfied. When the stomach is satisfied, hand won't have a problem, it'll also be satisfied. So, a, a practical thing, small adjustment, just offer it to Krishna. Offer everything. Uh, the mind is not satisfied. The mind is not offered to Krishna. We all know what it's like. It's a monster. Tripyanti uh, neha. We'll never be satisfied. By reading so much fiction, by watching so many videos, by playing so many games, by thinking of this, thinking of that, the mind never becomes satisfied. 
But when the mind is thinking of Krishna, the mind becomes actually happy. Uh -huh. Similarly, all of the senses, just speaking about so much rubbish, blah, 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 blah. It actually doesn't bring any kind of happiness. But when we speak about Krishna, we can go on and on and on. Krishna has so many wonderful activities. How he killed the Putana Rakshasi, how he's dancing with the gopis, how he's playing with the cowherd boys. And one becomes happy by hearing. So the eyes become happy by seeing Krishna, the ears, but everything in its healthy condition, everything uh, in its happy condition. We don't say don't work, we don't say don't have a family, we don't say don't eat, we don't say don't think. But connect everything with Krishna, yukta, and offer everything to Krishna. This is the path to happiness. Now, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu is teaching us this uh, path and all uh, the key to the whole thing is the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Hare Krishna, Hare Krishna, Krishna Krishna, Hare Hare, Hare Ram, Hare Ram, Ram All right, we'll stop here. Are there some questions? Uh, microphone, there it is. Hare Krishna Maharaj. Uh, my question is that uh, we are doing Krishna consciousness in this life and the goal of Krishna consciousness doing is going home back to Godhead. Uh, so uh, how can we feel, means what are the signs, what are the symptoms in this life that a Krishna conscious devotee gets at the time of death that he will go to home back to Godhead. Just like Saint Tukaram, he went Sardeha Vaikuntha, means from uh, Vaikuntha Viman came to him to for, take him to Vaikuntha. For? Uh, to Saint Tukaram. Uh, but but uh, uh, to same Tukaram. Tukaram. Uh, huh. But uh, we are not like that. Means we are doing our Krishna conscious uh, life. So how we will come to How know do we know what are the signs that symptom. after this life we'll go back to Godhead? The thing is, if you're Krishna conscious, then you're back to Godhead already in this life. Iha yasya harir dasye karmana manasagira nikalash vapyavas tasu jivan mukta suchate. Someone who's always engaged in the service of Krishna with his body, mind, and words, even in this life, is liberated. Even though he appears to still be in the material world, the example is given you have a coconut, and inside is the coconut pulp. Uh, so the coconut pulp is attached to the coconut shell. But when the coconut dries up, then the coconut pulp is still inside, but now it's separated. You can, if you shake it, you'll hear the pulp rattling. So even though it's inside, it's disconnected. So even though we're in this body, if we're always thinking about Krishna, speaking about Krishna, hearing about Krishna, serving Krishna, in this life also, liberated. Then you may go or not go. Even this world becomes Vishvam Purnam Sukhayate, uh, full of happiness. Uh, because we're not on the relative platform. If I get more of this, I'm happy. If I get less of this, I'm unhappy. If this, if that. No, if, as long as I can be engaged in Krishna's service. And that's the mentality of the spiritual world. When one has that mentality, Krishna consciousness, then already liberated. Is that okay? Hmm. Yes. And the Vimana will come sooner or later, don't worry. <laughs> Hare Krishna Maharaj. Maharaj means Krishna says in Bhagavad Gita that Yad Gatwana Nivartante. So once we go back home back to Godhead, we'll never fall back again. But uh, in Chaitanya Chaitamrit, uh, it is said that Maya Vadi Bhasha Sunle Hoye Sarvanash. And there is, means I have heard in lectures that even if a Vakuntha person hears Maya Vadi Bhasha, even they can fall down. But in this Vaikuntha, there's no Mayavadi Bhasha. <laughs> <laughs> then why this example is given in the lectures? Hmm? Why this example is given in the lectures that even if a Mahabhagavat hears Mayavadi Bhasha, he's... No, that means in this material world. Okay. Someone is trying to make spiritual progress by hearing from uh, sadhus, hearing from saintly persons. But if he hears from the Mayavadi saintly persons, then... Shunile hoy sarvanash. You heard from the wrong person. Now you're God, I'm God, we're all God. 
Uh, or you, it doesn't matter what you worship because everything is one. So you worship Ganesh, you worship Durga, you worship Shiva, you worship Krishna, you worship Surya. It's all the same. Shunilehoi Sarvanash. Then his spiritual, then his healthy condition is spoiled. The healthy condition is Sarvadharman Pratyaja Mamekam Sharnas. Uh, surrender exclusively to Krishna. Ekla Ishwar Krishna or Sabritya. Everyone else is servant of Krishna. But he hears from the Mayavadis, why servant? You can be also. Bhagavan. Then spoiled. Therefore, Chaitanya Mahaprabhu warned, don't hear from them. Is that okay? That is one, another small question, if you permit. A small one. <laughs> <laughs> yes. So, uh, we have so many anarthas and we have so much philosophy, but at the time of application when that anartha is popping up, all the philosophy is in the back of the mind and we react. So, for example, short-tempered behavior or lusty behavior. So, how we can means it's not that I'm a new person and I'm, then I'm getting distracted. It's after many, many years also the same thing happens. So like, like said, old habits die hard. So how can we overcome this? Old kind? habits die hard. So we have so much philosophy, but when it comes to application, then we become angry, we become lusty, this, that, what to do. Hmm? Um, and then the philosophy is in, in the back of the mind. Well. Two answers, I can think of two answers. One is put the philosophy, more philosophy in the front of the mind. <laughs> if the mind is filled with philosophy, with kirtan, with Krishna kata, with Krishna seva, if your mind is always thinking about Krishna, then there's no room for maya. Hmm? Yaha Krishna ta maya nahi adhika. Where there's Krishna, maya doesn't have room. Just like when I think they're just finished a program for distributing so many books in the month of December. Brahmacharis and others were engaged. So they had big targets how to distribute so many books, so nobody had any time to think about other things. And there's no time, they're too busy. So if one is too busy in Krishna's service, then Maya doesn't have the opportunity. Even Haridas Thakur, the prostitute was hired to entice him. She came in the dead of night. Please accept me, I'll die without you. You're so young, you're so handsome. That's all right, but I haven't finished my rounds yet. <laughs> uh, and those were not official rounds. He was relishing the chanting of the holy name of Krishna. Therefore, Maya came and he thought, what? That's it. So that's one answer. Another answer was given by His Holiness Radhanath Maharaj in this morning's class in response to Ananda Vrindavan Prabhu. That it's not surprising that we're uh, practicing. And in the practice stage, we're not yet perfect. Practice makes perfect, but practice isn't perfect. So we have to continue our practice uh, Utsaha, with enthusiasm, uh, nishcaya, tarya, and with determination, patience, faith. Yes, because I'm following the right process, it'll come. Uh, maybe there may be some slips, some falls, some deviation, but if I stick to this method, I'll come to the, to the goal. Rupa Goswami is saying, and just stick to it. And we see practically more progress, more progress. Right? Sometimes a step backward, but we're making forward progress as long as we stick to the method. Is that okay? Hmm. Yes. Hare Krishna Maharaj, thank you very much for a wonderful class. Wait a second. Here. Okay, that's what we wanted to know. So, my question is, uh, in this particular verse we are seeing that one who is yukta, he offers the fruits to Lord. Mm. And in 18th chapter we see that worker in the mode of goodness, he is not attached to the fruit of the work. So, it is a basic common sense for a worker in the mode of goodness 
to be detached from the work, for, for, detached from the results. Hmm. And we also see in the section, uh, in the same section where it is described that a worker in the mode of passion is attached to the profit, adoration, and distinctions. Hmm. And all three, be it profit, adoration, distinction, they are fruits only of the work. Hmm. So it shows very clearly that uh, by the proper analysis of the three modes of material nature, the conclusions which are given in third, fourth, and fifth chapters, whereby we are told that we renounce the results and we worship Lord with the results of the work, that automatically falls very common sense if the modes of material nature knowledge is given at the beginning. Given and, us? Huh? If they've given us what? If they are given in the very beginning, yes. so that these subject matter becomes easy to understand. Third, fourth, and fifth chapter, the way they so have been mentioned. You want to edit it to put 18 first and no, no. the other so, chapters back? So, so, so my question is that why the mode of material nature, they are put at the end, towards the end. Even in Bhagavatam, we are seeing that the mode of material nature, they are described at the 11th canto. So why they are put towards the end and not in the beginning, so that things fall in proper perspective? Because just, to, just to give you something to puzzle over. There are other things to say. First, we have to say that you're not this body in the second chapter. And just getting that through our heads, you know, will take quite some time. The, actually, this is a summary that if you work this way, you'll become entangled. If you don't work that way, then, then more detail, more detail, more detail. And still, Bhagavad Gita is only the ABCs. There's further discussion, further study in Bhagavatam. But anyway, it's been in this order for a long time and accepted by all the Acharyas. Arjun heard it in this order. We might as well stick with it. <laughs> or from another point of view, any order we hear it and still is a but, but, but. Why this? Why that? I don't understand. I don't agree. This, that. You know, if only you'd said it in this order, I would have understood it. But since you said it in that order, I'm having a hard time. No, I'm having a hard time because I'm attached to material existence. That's my real problem. It's not the book's problem. It's my problem. Something else? Yes, I don't even know. Or wherever the microphone is going. <coughs> Maharaj, <coughs> in the class, this is a practical problem that basically I, I face a lot, and many of the devotees who come and talk with me, they also face a lot. The, cla the, the, the verse is very clear that whatever we do it, the result we have to serve, it should be for Krishna. That is very clear, we understand the concept. But in a family life, many things we have to compromise. For example, whatever return we have got it by earning money from our business or from salary or whatever, our basic things are satisfied, food, shelter, clothing and everything. Then everything else is meant for Krishna's service. Hmm. But, for example, our family members wants recreation. They want to go for a foreign trip. If we say that, no, you cannot go because this is Krishna's money, we cannot go for this recreation. So, no, you go. You go to Echo Village or you go to... <laughs> if, if, you, if you like the ocean or something, you go to Puri. You already have an ocean here, but you want to see an exotic ocean, go to Puri. If you want to see uh, mountains and hills, go to Vrindavan and circumambulate Govardhan. That's good, good recreation. If that's not enough recreation for you, you can do Dandavat Parikrama. <laughs> Maharaj, I, I fully agree with that. I fully agree with that. But Maharaj, all the family members are not on that platform. And we have to see that all the family stays together. And the family member, to make them stay together, they said that you have to take us to foreign trip. Now on one side... Then you come to our temple in New York, you come to our temple in London, you come to our temple in Paris. <laughs> 
But then, Maharaj, we see to it that the expenses which we spend it for foreign trip, that is exorbitant. And just to see to it that the family member stays together, we have to spend that money. Sometimes there are the so many families in Bombay who never set foot outside the city, and they stay together. There are so many villagers; they never leave the village, and they're what they don't have a problem that my wife will leave me unless I take her to Paris. Maharaj, to be very frank, in Bombay, I think many people will agree with it. Now that there is a new system that has started in Bombay, and the system is people don't like to go and roam in Bo in India. Anybody wants to go and have a recreation, most of the people they want to go out of India only. Now, in that circumstances, to make the family together and see that the harmony is there in the family life, we have to do that adjustment. Otherwise, the family life is disturbed. Uh, this is not family life. This is Maya. <laughs> that you know, unless it's like almost like extortion. You know, that I'm, I'm I'll, <laughs> unless you take me to Rome. You know, I'll leave you or I'll be unhappy. You know, blah, 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 blah. It's, it's an extortion case. <laughs> but Mara, this is the reality. No, it's the opposite. <laughs> I, I don't know how to say, but Maharaj, I, I get lots of uh, devotees coming, and even the outside, and specifically devotees, they also come and tell me, but that if I don't take my family members at, uh, to a recreation in the foreign trip, then my whole house atmosphere becomes so disturbed that I cannot maintain my and spiritual life. And not only life. that, if you take them to Paris, then next year they want to know, now where are we going next? What about Australia? We haven't been to Australia. Take out the map. Oh, we haven't been to here. We haven't been to there. Trip yanti neha kripana. They're never satisfied. Just like the senses. You know, not that you say, the senses say, I want this, I want that. Now, all right, I gave you that. Are you happy? No. There's no end to it. Okay. So, Marat, then what is the solution? The solution can be summed up in one word, no. <laughs> Thank you. Okay, now, now the next, next doubt that... that... That has two subdivisions. <laughs> one version of the solution is no marriage. That's and the other version is, all right, we got, then, no Paris. <laughs> <laughs> okay. Okay, Maharaj, this I could understand it. Now about marriage and everything, we'll keep it apart, because that will be a long topic. <laughs> it will be a long topic, and it will be very, because, anyway, so we'll go for another points, which are very, very contagious issue, con uh, uh, issue. is about, uh, okay, I have to use everything in Krishna's service. But there are many things which we have to keep in our mind for our safety, our lifestyle, our precautions. Lifestyle. Our... Watch out for that one. That's the big, um, that's the high ticket item on, on your uh, account balance. I saw some statistic, some US government agency, that say 50, 60 years ago, if the husband and wife were both working, it's because the family was poor. Now, if the husband and wife are both working, it's because they need to work to maintain their lifestyle. So the advice <coughs> under such circumstances is bring your lifestyle down to earth. Understand. Fine. You bring your lifestyle because lifestyle. It's not that you have become happy by style, and you're having more style in your life, or a better style in your life. The one becomes happy by Krishna consciousness. Yontos sukantara ramas tatantar jyotiravasa. 
by being happy within. Lord Vamandev, when he, Bali Maharaj, he asked Bali Maharaj, please give three paces of land. Bali Maharaj said, you're a child, you don't understand things. Ask for something substantial. I'm the king, ask for something. No, anyone who wouldn't be satisfied with three paces of land wouldn't be satisfied if he got all three worlds. Of course, Lord Vamandev took all three worlds. <laughs> but it was instructive that uh, it, it, by austerity one becomes happy. And what is austerity? Austerity of the mind. Mana prasada samyatvam. Krishna says, austerity of the mind is to be satisfied. Take what you get and be satisfied. Don't be looking over there and say, but they have this, they have that, they have this, they have that. No. The person who's happy is the person who's satisfied. We saw that Prabhupada was satisfied when he was sitting in his uh, quarters at uh, Rasabi Hariji Temple, and he was satisfied when he was sitting in a hut in Bhubanesha. Because it didn't depend on if I have this, if I see that, if I can do this. It just depends on Krishna consciousness. Okay. Maradna, very, very, very complicated question, which is such a, such a big issue now, right, right now, is uh, a person has really earning money and he wants to use in Krishna's service. Mm. And that is the concept and he's a very spiritual minded person. Now the biggest problem that happens in Bombay is if he has something like three, four children, specifically son, three, four sons mm. being in household life. Mm. And Kali Yuga, everybody cannot stay together. Everybody wants nuclear family in due course of time. So because of that reason, that person has to go on checking himself that he should have at least two, three flats of his own so that no. when the children you will get nuclear, married. go nuclear. You want to be on your own and have your own flat? Be my guest. What does that have to do with me? Have I taken a contract that I have to maintain your lifestyle? Is that my, my duty? My duty is to give you Krishna consciousness and to provide necessities. Your lifestyle is not a necessity. You want it? Fine. Go work for it. Maharaj, in Bombay, uh, means in Indian culture, it is the father who takes care of the children's at least housing accommodation. You, you take care or not take care. My real, they're not taking care in this Bombay. They're not taking care because they're not making the sons Krishna conscious. They're making little, you know, two-bit Ravanas, little punky Ravanas who, you know, want to enjoy sense gratification. That's not maintaining, that I send you to college, I provide a flat, I do this, that, therefore I've maintained. No. It's a failure. The children are not Krishna conscious, but I've set them up in sense gratification. That's called failure. Marat, people will say, it's, I'm and talking they, about... But, it's, but in Bombay, it's called success. Yeah. In people, in people specifically in Bombay, what they say is, because you don't want to give your responsibility, you don't want to take care of the responsibility of giving a flat or giving accommodation to the, your children. That's, and you want to take Krishna as a shelter. And you want to avoid your responsibility and running away. Correct. This is what they say. And Good. because of that, you are running away, keeping Krishna into center, and you want to run away. And Correct. that's why you speak this We way. want to run away from all your nonsense and take shelter of Krishna. We're running for Krishna, you can run after money to pay for so many flats. But then the children, specifically, I, I've, I've heard Maharaj, and I, because I have so much counseling into this, the children used to say that if you are not going to provide us the house, why did you give us the birth? Then what to say that? Say too late to ask, ask that question. <laughs> Thank you.
or stick it back on them. If you're not going to be Krishna conscious, what was the use of giving birth to you? You know, why did you give me birth if you're not going to give me sense gratification? If you're not going to be a devotee, why did I give you birth? What's the use of you? I didn't give birth to you so that you can just demand sense gratification of every way, shape, and kind. That wasn't my idea. We have some higher purpose. So if you'll kindly conform to that higher purpose, your life will be successful. Otherwise, go out and work and have your maya at your own cost. Why should I pay for your maya? But if the son is a devotee, he is seriously Christian Krishna consciousness, then is it not the responsibility of the father to provide him a house? Mm -hmm. If the son is a devotee, if the son is a devotee, he has no problem. Krishna will provide. You may provide, but he'll, he'll not be in difficulty. Nitya yukta vyuktanam yoga kshema bhamya. It's not that if I don't provide, I may die. Still. But Maharaj, father, as a father, is it not the responsibility of that? Because the son has shown the sincerity of Krishna consciousness. That's good. Then you provide as far as possible. But not that, you know, you're like a held, hand, held hostage. You know, unless I provide you a, a house and a car and a this and a that and, and trips to Paris and, and this, that, then I'm not doing my duty. As far as possible. You know, spiritually, I'll give you everything, and material, I'll, gi I'll give you as far as, as it's available. I'm not the Supreme Personality of Godhead. I snap my fingers and then lax and crores fall from the sky for you. So, you know, don't be a spoiled brat also. You, you, a generation of, of young people who think that they're entitled, you know, because I took birth, I'm entitled to this, I'm entitled to that, I'm entitled to this, I'm entitled to that, and therefore I, I can just, you know, cry and get everything. You become a nonsense rascal. Get serious. Yeah, we have this in, in America also, you know, generations of, of, whole generations of young people who think that they're just entitled to everything. The same things that their parents and grandparents worked for, they think should be handed to them. Austerity is good. I can tell you that there's so many, uh, you know, in America, so many Indian boys go for education. And they wipe up the floor with the American kids. The Indians and the um, Asians. Why? Because the young American kids, you know, of course we're going to college and we're entitled and, you know, we, we're, we're going to have we'll, we'll study and we'll, we'll get our degree and we'll enjoy uh, women and, and uh, you know, we'll have a great time here in this wonderful park with all of our sense gratification. And the Indian and Asian students are thinking that my family worked, you know, gave their whole life so that I can go to college. And I, you know, they're, they're trained like work, 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 work. They go there and they study. And so they wipe up the floor with the American kids. That's just material. My point is that they, they think I have some responsibility here. I can't just play games and enjoy it at the expense of my ancestors. Okay. So that, what is that? That's austerity. That if I want something, there has to be some austerity. If I want happiness, there has to be austerity. If I want peace, there has to be austerity. You toss out that austerity and you, you spoil the child. Right. Marat Baba, again, a very big question that happens in India about the ancestor's property. Mm. The ancestor has given the property, it has comes to the father. Mm. Now that ancestor property becomes big because the years have gone too much. So it has become a very big picture. And then the father has also earned some money. 
and that he used in Krishna service. But when he wants to use ancestor's property in Krishna service, the son it becomes very wild. Says this is not your property. This is property of the ancestor. Where even my right also comes. So you don't have You're to spend that property. You're a nonsense rascal. It wasn't my ancestor's property. It's not my property, and it's certainly not your property. It's Krishna's property. It's Krishna's property. It's not your property. What? By what right is it your property? You're not this body. Those aren't your ancestors. The property was there before your ancestors came. It'll be there after you're gone. How is it yours? Nonsense. It's Krishna's property. And you think I gave birth to you so you can be a thief and steal Krishna's property? Claim it as your own? What is that in Bhagavad Gita? As far as possible, what you need, I'll do my best. Mahagadhakashasvid, but not more. Not more. Not that you're entitled to this and this and this, entitled, entitled. What you need. Otherwise we become more and more miserable and your Bombay becomes more and more a, a collection of uh, fee people with a fever for sense gratification. And it becomes harder to be happy in Bombay than it becomes to, to be happy in a village. You know, you see, you go to a village and there's a child and he's got a stick and there's a little nail on the stick and there's a wheel. And the kid has got the stick and he's pushing the wheel and he's happy. And the same kid, you put him in Bombay unless he's got a, a Game Boy and a video of this and an Xbox and a this and a that. And yeah, 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 yeah. <laughs> Therefore, Krishna says, mana prasada. Yadvichcha labha santushto. One should be satisfied with what comes. That we should learn. Everyone's karma is different. What comes to you, the rich man will get money this way or that way. If your destiny is to be poor, you can do anything you want. You won't get money. It's not just by my work or by my uh, anything. According to divine arrangements, something will come, something will not come. So my duty is to be Krishna conscious, not to try to get more. Thank you very much, Maharaj. Thank you. So Hare nice. Krishna. Thank you. RG Media, YouTube channel. Like, share, subscribe.